We'll now take a look at our boxing definitions and try and give an explanation. Start by just restoring your screens and the VizPoly one we can just minimize that. In our cross section view we want to set our exaggeration back to two times and just profile any one of your sections in road one. You can then maximize that view and we need to turn on our road one boxing sections. So we turn on the models curbing sections, sub base sections and subgrade sections. So just very quickly if I select each one our first boxing layer copies the interface string comes down from the box back of the curve goes under the curb follows the design surface across the top of the road and then on the other side where there is no curb and channel it just follows it out to the edge. Our second layer does the same thing follows the curb and channel but instead of coming back up to the design surface it then follows the design surface at a specified distance below it. And our third layer, our subgrade layer starts off 150 mils behind the curb and channel and goes a specified distance below it and then follows the design surface until it each time until it interfaces with the batter on the right hand side. Just finish on that. To explain the boxing definitions we're just going to open up our boxing file and click on open. This will open up the edit boxing definitions panel and we can select any one of our boxing layers and edit it to have a look at how it was created. So we'll start off with our left curbing and we click on edit. The left curbing starts with a drop command and this appears to work in reverse to how boxing is typically created which is from left to right. If we zoom in on our boxing here on our curb and I just hit F2 you can see that our boxing comes along, follows the interface, comes along comes down underneath the curb and channel and comes back up. And this is all, this whole thing is created in this drop command. So we start off with a vertex from the design layer and that vertex was the lipper curb and we want to come down 165 mils to this point here. Our ending offset, so that's where we start, our end is once again on the design layer and it's the back of curb on the left. And we have a cross fall of in this case zero. So it's going to create a cross fall of zero until it meets up underneath that back of curb and then joins back up. You can also name your new vertices. So in this case I've named them S1, X1 which is the end of the cross fall and E1 which is the end of the point. Our only other command inside of the uh, left curbing is the vertex command and that's basically saying when we get to the lip of curb I want you to come back up to a height of zero. So it's drawing this line back up here. The remainder of the boxing definition which then follows the uh, road pavement comes from the right side. So we finish on that one and open up the right no curbing and click edit. This is just using a copy command and it's saying copy from the vertex road 1 which was our road center line, offset 0 and a height of 0. And so it's just coming to this point here and so then it will join back to our last command which was on the left hand side and then it will get joined to the next command which in this case is the end at the uh, interface on the right. So it's just going to copy each point until it gets to the end of which is on the interface on the right. I'll just have a look at another section quickly. So if I profile a section through the intersection, you'll note that on this side we only go to the lip of curb on the left hand side because this is the intersection. So if we have a look at the left, well, let's look at the left sub base intersection. 
This is just using copy mark commands. So we copy from the lipper curve on the left down a height of 165 millimeters and just copy it to the center of the road. On the right hand side, here we're using a vertex command. We could have also used a copy command. This gave us an opportunity to use the vertex command. So we're saying from the road one, point road one, come down 165 mils. Basically the same as a copy command. The advantage of the vertex command is it allows you to have two separate heights. In this case we're only using one so we could have used the copy command. And then over on the far right hand side we're doing an intersect command. So the intersect command allows us to intersect two different surfaces to create that point. So in this case we're starting off with a vertex on the design layer which is the edge of shoulder which is this point here and we're getting the first face from the crossfall to the right of it. So it's basically this face along here. Our point number two is a vertex again. It comes from the design surface and it's the road center line. But this time we're coming down 165 mils. So we're coming down 165 mils and we're getting our crossfall from the design at that point from the right hand side of it. So it's this face here interfacing with this face here down 165 mils which gives us this point here and then it joins those two points together. At the end of that to ensure that our cross section goes all the way out to the interface we have a copy to end of section and that's been ticked on. We can click on OK on that. We can save that file and finish on that.